we will talk about the osteology of the skull now as you can see here we have three parts the mandible the vault of the skull and the base of the skull so first we will learn about the vault of the skull now this is the skull vault okay so you can see that it has several parts okay so it's made out of the frontal bone anteriorly then the parietal bones on either side laterally then the occipital bone posteriorly now the frontal bone merges articulates with the two parietal bones by the suture that is seen here which is basically the coronal suture okay so it's called the coronal suture because it's like a crown would wear a crown like this okay then this suture here right this suture that runs like this between the two parietal bones we call this the sagittal suture okay so if you follow the sagittal suture down like this okay you come to the occipital bone and here you can see a triangular like suture which is called the lamboid suture okay so this is a small part of the occipital bone that we can see now these sutures as you age will become fused right they will calcify so this is looking at the vault on the superior surface if you turn the vault like this and look at the inferior surface again you can see the sutures so here the lamboid suture here okay then sagittal suture here and the coronal suture here but you can see that most of it looks ossified right that is because the sutures start to ossify from the inner plate of bone right so from inside to outside it will ossify further you can see some impressions here okay impressions here which are for the arachnoid granulations okay arachnoid granulations and these impressions are for the blood vessels. Now we will talk about the base of the skull. Now here you can see the inside of the base of the skull. Right, so the base of the skull is divided into the three cranial fossae. This is the anterior cranial fossa. This is the middle cranial fossa. And this is the posterior cranial fossa okay so these cranial fossae house the different lobes of the brain the anterior cranial fossa houses the frontal lobe the middle cranial fossa houses the two lateral lobes and the posterior cranial fossa holds the occipital lobe okay Now if you look at the anterior cranial fossa, this part is actually the roof of the orbit. Okay, and that is the frontal bone. Then you come to this bone which is the sphenoid bone. It has two wings, the lesser wings and the greater wings on either side. And then the body of the sphenoid. Okay, so the anterior cranial fossa is made out of the frontal bone and the sphenoid bone. Then down here you have the petrous temporal bone okay so this is the thick part of the temporal bone that is why we call it the petrous temporal bone okay and then this part is the is the squamous part of the temporal bone all right so that those two and the parts of the sphenoid bone here form the middle cranial fossa then below here posterior cranial fossa is made of the occipital bone all right this part is of course the petrous temporal this part is the occipital bone 
Now let's look at some openings in the base of the skull. Now in the anterior cranial fossa, this obvious opening here is called the cribriform plate. Okay. Okay. So you here you can see small area like a sieve. Okay. Here. So from these small nerve fibers from the nasal mucosa come up. Okay. So this is actually through the olfactory epithelium. You get small nerve fibers coming up into the cranial cavity. Okay. And then if you look at, at the sphenoid bone, you can see here what we call the two optic canals. Alright, two optic canals where the two optic nerves come out. Right? So they come out like this and they cross each other somewhere here. Now this part here is called the cella tersica. So the cella tersica is where you get the pituitary gland. Alright, so the pituitary gland will sit here on what you call the pituitary fossa and you will get the optic, optic chiasma where they cross each other in front. Okay, so this part here actually is a very important structure. the foramen here which is called the foramen rotundum right the round foramen then below that here is what we call the foramen ovale or the oval foramen okay because of their shape you have given them they have given them different names right foramen ovale here in the foramen rotundum here okay and then here you can see a tiny foramen called the foramen spinosa. Okay, foramen spinosa. Okay, so here you have the supraorbital fissure here, the foramen rotundum here, and the foramen ovale here. Okay, so here you get what is called the trigeminal ganglion. Okay, and the trigeminal ganglion has three parts. Okay, the ophthalmic the mandibular and the maxillary okay so these three parts leave the skull through the supraorbital foramen foramen rotunda and the foramen ovale okay and then if you look at the foramen spinosum you can see a small impression arising from it and moving up like this okay so this foramen actually from it you get the middle meningeal artery arising all right so if you turn it like this from here okay it's a little difficult to see the tip okay but from there here you can see the tip there right that is where the this is where the maxillary artery will be like this okay so from that you get the middle meningeal artery going through the right going through this foramen here and then coming out here in the middle cranial fossa okay then we we'll look at what is called the foramen spinosum this is the small foramen here okay 
so if you put this wire in here right and then you turn around and you can see that it is coming out from there all right okay so this is the infratemporal fossa here okay so where it's coming out just look at that all right now let's look at the carotid canal now here this is the carotid canal right so this is how the carotid artery will come through right so if you turn it like this you can see here right so that is the carotid canal okay so the carotid artery reaches the cranial cavity through this carotid canal up like this okay now let's look at the petrous temporal bone this one here on the side you can see a small foramina foramen here right so this is the internal acoustic meatus all right so this is where the nerves come out right so here you get the inner ear and the middle ear here so the vestibular cochlear nerve and the facial nerve travel through this foramen okay and then here down here you can see the foramen lacerum continuing okay and this big foramen here the largest one is called the foramen magnum the large foramen Now let's study the parts of the mandible. Now this is the mandible. Okay. So what are the parts? This is the body of the mandible. Okay. This is the ramus of the mandible. As you can see the ramus goes up and divides into two parts. Okay. So this is called the clinoid process of the mandible. This is called the head of the mandible. Okay, it's clear on this side, right? So this is the head of the mandible. This is the neck of the mandible, which is thinned out, right? Neck of the mandible. All right, and here this is called the angle of the mandible, right? And then if you look at the anterior aspect, okay, so there is a foramen here which is called the mental foramen okay this foramen it's called the mental foramen so there are two foramina okay and through here you get what is called the mental nerve all right mental nerve now this is the alveolar process of the mandible this is where the teeth are right so these are the sockets for the teeth so just like the maxilla the mandible also has sockets for the teeth all right and here you can see an area here where there's only bone okay there is no alveolar process so what has happened here is that the person has lost their teeth while they were alive all right and they have been they have lost the teeth either removed or just fallen off and then the alveolar processes when the teeth fall out they get they get denuded right denuded they get broken off like and you get a flat area like this however here if you look you have the sockets right the sockets are present but there are no teeth okay so that means basically that these teeth were lost after the person died actually right so during processing or during the uh, when the bone was being handled the teeth have fallen off that is why the sockets or the sockets in the alveolar bone are still present sockets in the alveolar bone are still present here also you can see a smooth area right so there may have been teeth here which have fallen off before the person has died right so you can say that these teeth have fallen off after the person has died 
and the teeth here have fallen off before the patient person died okay right so then you look at the inside okay then you can see another foramen here this is called the mandibular foramen all right mandibular foramen mandibular foramen and the mandibular nerve and vessels go through here all right and the mandibular nerve and vessels supply the teeth with nerves and uh, blood vessels and nerves supply the teeth and it is actually the mandibular nerve part of the mandibular nerve which comes out of here as the mental nerve all right so this is the prominence which forms the chin okay this is a what we call the margin of the jaw okay so the mandible is called the lower jaw so this is the margin of the jaw which you can very easily palpate all right so this this is closed off in the living and we call that the flow of the mouth all right and then you can see what you call the mylohyoid line in the uh, inside of the mandible which attaches the mylohyoid muscle then you can see the genial tubercles which will also give attachment to muscles okay and on this you can see i mean it's not visible but the, there is a line which cause which has the mucosa attaching to it right so uh, the flow of the mouth will have the tongue in it right and the mucosa will reflect on to the bone making the mucoperiosteum then go on towards the flow of the mouth right so here there's a line where you get the mucosa attaching okay so that line is above the mylohyoid line 